Do you want to bring down the government, Mr Rees-Mogg, the government of which you are a backbench MP? Uh, no, I support the government and I wish the government to continue. I don't support its withdrawal agreement, but the um, two questions are separate questions. What do you think will happen? Because there doesn't seem to be a majority for her deal. Brexiteers think that it keeps us yoked to the EU and we rely on their permission, although that was contested earlier, in order to get out of potential backstop. Um, Remainers don't think it delivers the benefits of being in the EU. If it is voted down, she has a crushing defeat. Is it not inevitable that she has to go? Uh, no, I don't think it is. Um, that Everyone knows that the European issue is a particularly divisive one, not just within the Conservative Party, but across political parties. There are many views. It's also clear that the House of Commons knows more clearly what it doesn't want than what it does want. So although there's no majority for this deal, it's hard to see that there's a majority for any deal at the moment, and that, in a way, is not the fault uh, of the government. So isn't that, will... sorry to interrupt, but isn't that the fault of Brexiteers? And I go back to the referendum. When people voted to leave, each individual person in that 17.4 million might have thought they were voting for a different thing. They might have been voting on immigration, or they might have been voting on more money for the NHS, or they might have been voting on fish, or they might have been voting on the European uh, Court of Justice. The fact of the matter is they voted for ice cream, they didn't know what flavour ice cream they were going to get. There's never been a unified mm. plan. No, I, I think you do down the intelligence of the electorate. What they're I'm not for, suggesting for a uh, moment that each individual member of the electorate isn't intelligent. That's to uh, mischaracterise uh, uh, what I say. What they voted for and what was clear, and the thread running through every example you came up with, was that they voted to leave the European Union. And that leaving the European Union opens up all those things. Control of fish, getting out of the European Court of Justice's jurisdiction, not paying all the money. All that is leaving. And what many people have said to me over the last month or so is that they didn't vote for a deal, they voted for leave. And the problem with the House of Commons is about three-quarters of members of the House of Commons voted to remain, and therefore you've got a Remainer House of Commons trying to implement a leave that it doesn't want. And that's why you've got no agreement on the deal. From a lever point of view, it's very straightforward. We leave, and a deal is secondary to the issue of leaving. Isn't, isn't the biggest problem that we have a Prime Minister who also voted remain? And therefore, I think, has laid herself open to the charge which has now come to fruition, that throughout all this, she's had a subliminal, inbuilt sense of, I don't really want to be doing this. I know the British public voted for it, but actually, I would rather we stayed. So she ended up with this plan, which is a gigantic fudge, which is neither one thing nor the other. <coughs> Most people hate it, as we're going to find with the vote tonight. And so we are where we are. But then, I would say, if I was a Brexiteer, isn't the obvious thing then to actually let us just leave on March the 29th with no deal, with no plan, go on to WTO? Isn't that now, of all the options, the purest one to Brexit and what people thought they were getting? I think your analysis is absolutely spot on. I think there is a real problem that both the Prime Minister and the Chancellor were Remainers. And this is a twofold problem. One, exactly the one you say, that there is a feeling uh, that they always backed Remain and therefore they wanted a deal that looked like remaining. But there's also the other issue that, as a Brexiteer, I recognise that compromises had to be made in the negotiating process, but that people would have trusted a Brexiteer to compromise more than they trust a Remainer to compromise. And therefore, her flexibility was limited because of being a Remainer in the first place. And I, I think it would have been better if we had had a Prime Minister who believed in leave, which is why, uh, during the leadership contest, I supported uh, leavers. So I think that's right. And I think the second part of your analysis is absolutely right, too, that it looks now as if it's too late to get any specific deal, though there are lots of deals that could work that the government hasn't really tried. And therefore, we need to leave, go to WTO terms, and the world will not end. Uh, the fears are hugely exaggerated and are done so for political purposes by people who never wanted us to leave the European Union. Well, I, I mean, I, I, look, I don't know what would happen in that eventuality. Well, and there would be no transition period. Well, hang on, hang on. fall off a cliff. Let me finish, let me finish. There would be tariffs I mean, You're talking on immediately about... I, again, I come back to this. I was editor of the Daily Mirror when the Euro debate was raging. 
all the same people leading the charge now against the, the Brexit, uh, Tony Blair, Alistair Campbell, Peter Mandelson and so on, John Major and others, they were all encouraging everyone to think that if we didn't enter the euro, it would be a financial disaster for the country. And it simply never happened. In fact, the opposite happened. By not being in the euro, it was beneficial to this country. And actually, you can see now massive problems with the, sing with the European currency. Many countries fed up with it. What many if countries, not exactly the many same countries as the like Italy, with the euro? Greece, Germany, Spain, and others suffering acute financial hardship. And so I, I'm like, well, I hear all the apocalyptic warnings, mm. but I don't think I necessarily believe them. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. My question for you, though, Jacob Rees Mogg, do you know? I mean, you sound quite confident that the, it wouldn't be a disaster, but do you actually know what would really happen? No. no nobody can ever be certain about the future. That's merely a statement of the human condition. Uh, what I look at is who is forecasting what, and your point, I think, hits the nail on the head. All the people who forecast that joining the euro would be economically beneficial think leaving now would be an absolute disaster. And those who were right about the exchange rate mechanism were right about the euro are the ones who are saying, actually, the economic opportunities are outside the European Union. Global growth is not within the European Union. Germany is tipping into recession uh, pretty much as, as we speak. The euro project has condemned areas of Europe to very high levels of unemployment, has been an economic failure. And that releasing ourselves uh, from the links to a failed economic project is a real economic boon. Uh, in 2017, 44% of UK exports went to the EU. 53% of all UK imports came from the EU. New trade deals with other countries will take years to sign. Um, they will not compensate for our what? loss of trade with our biggest trade partner. Well, well, what loss of trade? Well, because if we put tariffs up and costs go up if, and we if, put barriers if, in and if, we lose just-in-time um, transporting, you know, we're putting well, up massive obstacles. But why are we going to put up these obstacles? Because you're is suggesting all... we, we come off a cliff edge on no, the 29th no, and we don't have a deal. No, I'm sorry to say this is all complete invention. There is no reason for the British to put any obstacles to imports from the European Union when we leave. None at all. No tariffs, no non-tariff barriers. Indeed, it's an opportunity to reduce tariffs and tariff barriers against the rest of the world, cutting the cost of imports from the rest of the world, which are very often more competitive uh, than those coming from the European Union. So it's a really exciting opportunity for us. And you're assuming, if I may say so, that the government would decide to punish the UK for leaving. Why would any government do that? If no deal is such a brilliant opportunity, why isn't it something that the Prime Minister grasps with both hands? Well, that's what Mr Morgan was saying a moment ago, that the Prime Minister is a Remainer who wants to keep us close to the European Union, and that runs throughout the deal.